for the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right wrote this song several years ago and I haven't sung it in a long time I love it it kind of goes with the message I'm happy now are you happy don't you frown at me and tell me you're happy now, okay? okay? I'm happy now since Jesus came and saved my soul. Happy since the Lord has washed and made me whole. I'm on my way to heaven, praise God, and it's grand. Just walking through the promised land. Now Joshua said, Moses, our leader here is gone. But we're not gonna quit. No, we're just gonna carry on. So make your mind up right now and go quick, strap on your sword. For as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. I'm happy now since Jesus came and saved my soul. Happy since the Lord has washed and made me whole. I'm on my way to heaven, praise God. And it's grand just walking through the promised land. Now Caleb had been faithful. He'd been so very bold. He'd followed after his Lord, but was getting kind of old. He said, we'll take this mountain by the grace of God you see. I'm a gonna follow Jesus. Come on boys and follow me. I'm happy now since Jesus came and saved my soul. Happy since the Lord has washed and made me whole. I'm on my way to heaven, praise God, and it's grand just walking through the promised land. Now, brother, you can have this victory if you desire. Just draw nigh unto Jesus and he'll build a little fire. If you give to him your heart, and then your life, yourself, your all, and follow after Jesus, then just watch those giants fall. I'm happy now since Jesus came and saved my soul. Happy since the Lord has washed and made me whole. I'm on my way to heaven, praise God. And it's grand just walking through the promised land. Just walking through the promised land. Amen. Some, somebody say amen right there or glory or something. Man. Whoa. I'm going to tell you something. Turn to Genesis chapter 3, but I will tell you something. Bless my heart. Drinking from a saucer. Anybody ever pour that and just good and hot and pour it out in the saucer to drink it a little bit, you know? Amen. Cup is overflowed. Cup is overflowed. Glory to God. What a blessing. What a blessing. Anybody glad you saved again? Praise God. Boy, that, that'll light your fire, brother. He pours, overflows our cup every day. We got more than, more than enough. Oh, how he blesses us. Well, I could go another way, but we won't. Let's stay with a message here today. I want to talk about the Lord's walk. The Lord's walk. Chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, if God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. She did what they're doing to the new Bible versions there. She added to the word of God, didn't she? But anyway, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, 
and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking, uh, the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Father, help us to remember that uh, you walk, you know how, you walk deliberately among us. You said we're two or three are gathered together. You'd be here, and I believe you're here in the midst of us today. But Lord, as we've seen some of the little clips and, and heard the stories of well, how you're moving on our nation and moving on our young people, we thank you for that. But all would you not pass us by as we think about, oh God, the, the good things you're doing to others, we want to in honor too. We want you to manifest your presence to us today. Just help us. Speak to every heart. Begin with mine. And Lord, may we go away from here saying we met with Jesus. Not just another service, not just another sermon, not just another um, fellowship together, but oh God, It'll be something real. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Well, there's many aspects of the Lord's walk in the world. We're going to talk about some of them. We'll go through the Bible here and, and cover some more there. He, he walks in the midst of his people. He's here today. Walking up and down these, I'll say pews, <laughs> chairs. And checking your heart and checking mine up here. And he's just walking around all over the place. You can't see him, but, oh, he is. And he walks to correct sometimes and reprove. That's what he's going to have to do in this first story here that, that we're talking about. Uh, but uh, sometimes he walks to give us victory. Don't, don't you want victory today? I really want victory. Uh, sometimes he walks in our midst of our troubles and our trials and our heartaches. And, and uh, we'll be talking about some of that today, too. And maybe you get something out of it. Number one, God is a great reprover right here in our verse. Verse eight there, that was the one I started to just read it by itself. But I want to give you the story there so you get up to it. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. After they sinned, they were afraid, weren't they? And, uh, and walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They'd done that with God since they'd been created. And God was there with them. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Well, you can't hide from God. God knew where they were. But, but uh, you say, why did he ask where he was then? Because he wanted to know where he was spiritually, see? And he knew that too. But uh, Adam was, you know, we have to confess our sins, don't we? We do. But uh, Adam and Eve had sinned and, and, and uh, God met them to reprove them. But the wonderful thing about it, he showed mercy even in this, even in this. He didn't come, you know, he could have come into the garden like he did in Mount Sinai. He could have come with the burning flame on the mountain, you know, and he could have come there uh, that, that God would, uh, you, you know, they feared when they heard the thunder and light, lightning and saw all those things. He didn't come that way. He come as one that was their friend. He came still familiar with them. He, he, he'd been doing that. And he came to do it again. Now, he knew they'd already sinned, but isn't God merciful? Boy, I love that song. His tender mercies. Oh, they call them tender mercies. He came walking, by the way. He didn't come running. The Bible says he was walking. And that means something. He was deliberately walking. Uh, I like it when I'm around people that are slow to anger. You know, the Bible says God's slow to anger. He's slow to anger, and he tells us to be slow to anger. He says in Psalm 16, verse 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and uh, he that ruleth his spirit better than he that taketh the city. Can you imagine a conquering hero, and boy, they'd give him a ticker tape right now. No, God said, better than that, if you can just rule your spirit. If you can just keep getting mad, and you need to be slow to anger, just like God. We want, he wants us to be like Jesus. And that's exactly the way he is. He's slow to anger. Boy, if he wasn't, he'd already mashed me in the dirt a long time ago and I'd been gone. Well, number two, God is the mighty deliverer. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 14. We'll give you a little bit of background story and then I'll read the verse. Uh, three men were supposed to bow when they played the music. Remember over Nebuchadnezzar? And uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused. They refused to bow. And uh, so they tied them up and bound them up. 
head and, hand and foot and head to toe. And uh, they got the flames so much hotter than it was already that when they went to throw them in, it burned the men up that was throwing them in. Woo, now that's a hot fire. He meant to do it, destroy them. And uh, so he said, and in fact, the verse before this, I believe, he asked the question to some of his fellows there, hey, how many people, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, how many people we throw in there? <laughs> then we throw, yes, O king, we throw three in there. I see four. And that's here where we got to. Deuteronomy 3.25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. How did he know that? He was a devil. <laughs> he was a mean man. Well, you remember Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And uh, Son of Living God. he said, Flesh and blood hadn't revealed it to you. I won't tell you, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to him because he was a rascal, mean man, wicked man. He had in, fully intended to kill these three men. He threw them in there. And in the meantime, I don't know how many men helped, helped to throw them in, but they died. <laughs> they did die. And, uh, but I want to tell you something. He said, I see four in there walking around. You see the fire, the only thing a fire did is just burn the ropes off of them, set them free. Bound. Listen, that's what the trial and the trouble and the heartache in your life and my life will do to you. It'll set you free. It'll help you to grow. It'll help you to be a little better than you used to be. Oh my, I believe after they came out of that fiery furnace, son, I don't believe you could have ever. Now you couldn't before, but you really couldn't now. Man. Oh, wow. If God doesn't deliver you, you won't be delivered. We need to understand that and quit trusting in our smart bombs and our, and our airplanes and all those stuff. Those, uh, I don't know how many hundred millions, they, some of them one, one airplane will cost anymore. It's awful, awful the price of it. But oh, I tell you, he can deliver us from our enemies. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And so uh, I mean, he was walking with them outside and they could see him and, and the king could see him and so on. But nonetheless, the spirit of God walks with him. He can't see him, but he's just as real. And since his presence with, is with us, we need to be careful about our sin. You know, we got a sin problem, don't we? Yeah, we are bad to sin and grieve him. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. Uh, whereby you're sealed under the day of redemption. He's not only the one who saved you, he's the one that sealed you. And uh, that seal's not going to come off until the day of redemption and we'll get us a new body. But anyway, we're to keep guard of all times because God is in the midst of us just like he was there. Right. Wow. And ought to encourage us to not be too worried about your enemies. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not too worried about Putin. You say he might come over here next, he might do it. I don't have to worry about China. They might come over here, and they could. Uh, in fact, China, all they'd have to do is just quit sending drugs over here. They make all their drugs. <laughs> Say, quit sending all this other stuff. These COVID tests we got here. If you want some COVID tests, by the way, Norman's got plenty back there. You can have all you want. Take a load home with you. Uh, but it came from China, okay? All they'd have to do is just cut us off. They wouldn't have to really, or maybe send another balloon over here. I won't go there, but anyway. First Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verse 57 it says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we ought to keep our guard up against sin because he walks in our midst. Not just when you come to church, but when you, when you go home. And uh, he, he, as he delivered the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, and he did, by the way, he had to part the Red Sea. He had a lot of things he did to get them out of there and do all those uh, 10 plagues and things that he did. But he'll deliver us. Uh, what is that song we sing? He is able to deliver thee. I love that song. He is able to deliver thee, though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Amen. Well, number three, he's a loving sustainer. Over in Daniel chapter three, verse 25. Excuse me. Uh, uh, give me that verse again there. I'm on my wrong. Let me, let me get over here a little farther here. Uh, Hebrews 13, 5, that's the one I want. Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, you, you could quote it with me, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Most of you could quote that. Yeah, he, he'll never leave you. And so he didn't leave them children when he, they got in that fiery furnace and he won't leave us. And the fire again was used just to burn the stuff off that the world put on them. Isaiah says this in Isaiah 43, uh, the first three verses, 
It says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Uh, you know, when he called it, the shepherd called his sheep, he called them by name. And them sheep hear his voice, and they'll follow him. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and uh, they follow me. And I ask people a lot of times, yeah, they'll, they'll tell me they're saved and, and they're not going to church or they're not doing anything. You know, I name some stuff. I say, you read your Bible every day. You, uh, some of them don't even have a Bible. Uh, you, go, you, you know, you pray every day. Bible commands us to pray and so on. I'll give them a list of things. Not doing any of those things. They ain't got any evidence. They ain't got any evidence. Oh, he said, I've called, thou art mine. I know you by name. Does he know you by name? Verse two says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Boy, those boys weren't burned. Said they couldn't even smell smoke on them, huh? Flames shall not even kindle upon him. Verse three says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Man, he, he, get, he gave his only begotten son for us. Amen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever... Believe in him, it's not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, number four, God's the one that helps us. Over in Matthew chapter 14, verse 25 to 27, it says this. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out with fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. He'll help you in every kind of trial. And of course, uh, Tam and Beth know it well. We know about those floods that come up into the Ohio River Valley there. And when he said, I'll be with you through the water, we know that. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego know about the fire. And some of us know about some fiery trials, don't we? Paul talked about the fiery trials that, that are to try you. That's what they're for is to try you, test you, and test your metal. See where you're at. Uh, we were talking the other day with somebody. We, sometimes I think I'm way above where I, I really am. I think, I, I think I'm pretty, you know, and look out, God will bring you. He'll show you where you're at and he'd be like Peter, you know. But I was preaching on that, those verses a few weeks ago on Wednesday night, I believe it was. And I made a point and I'd never seen it before. How that Jesus had prayed into the fourth watch of the night. He prayed six or seven hours while this storm was going on. And I'd never thought about it before. And he came walking on the water. Just there's the story. We just read it. And I thought, wait a minute. Jesus is praying six or seven hours in the storm. He was out on that mountain in the storm. Is prayer important? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. I mean, pray an hour a day. You know what he said in the garden? What could you not watch with me? One hour. One hour. That's all. And if you can't pray one hour at a time, you can pray 15 minutes till you get an hour in. You know, to pray now and then pray later and then pray when. I pray 30 minutes at a time and I try to get in and then I'll go try to get it later on. Oh, yeah. Oh, listen. He, he made himself known unto them. Notice that. is in the, the last watch there. It was in the darkest hour. It's always darkest before dawn. Is that what they say? I'm telling you, he came, he may, he'll make, he, he'll wait. The Bible says he'll wait that he may be gracious. And he'll wait till, man, they was, they've been fighting that thing all night. They was trying to put that little old boat around that little ship. Uh, man, but when all seems lost, that's when Jesus comes on the scene. Boy, I, over and over when Israel was, the, the enemy was coming in on oh, man. Ooh, that's when Jesus came up, when, when God came down and took care of him. And he's not only our deliverer, but the Bible says he's also our peace, capital P. Ephesians 2, 14, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. He tore that old fail in the temple between the holy place and the holy of holies and two, top to bottom. That's why we don't have a priesthood. Jesus is our great high priest. Remember that? Amen. That's why I say the Roman Catholic Church doesn't have anything that's scriptural. Nothing scriptural about it. They got a priesthood. God's through it. God's already tore it up. <laughs> hey, when you get through with something, you tear it up. Make rags out of it. Wipes. <laughs> Clean up, you know. Man. Well, he's a God that helps us. And oh, my friend, 
Let him calm you. In fact, did you know he'll either calm the storm or he'll calm you enough you won't care. You, do, you can handle it. He'll calm the storm or he'll calm you. And he does it one or the other, different ways in different people's lives. And oh, he's the one that helps us. Be of good cheer, he said. Isn't that good? I mean, they're in there fighting this thing, and it's dark as part of the night, and they, they about give up. Man, we, we, we're gone. It's the end of things. We're going down. Here comes Jesus walking on the water. Be of good cheer. Let's be happy. Let's be happy in our trials. Amen. Number five. He's uh, the God that searches our hearts. And he does. And he knows every heart. He knows every thought that you and I think. Uh, what was that preacher? It used to, he used to be down in Brownsville, Texas. I can't remember his name. He's dead now. He used to call, talk about our stinking thinking. <laughs> Boy, stinking thinking. I listened, I listened to, to uh, uh, Philip uh, Luther the other day on the radio. And, and he was talking about that. He didn't call it stinking thinking, but he, he was sure talking about how the devil works on that mind, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, Under the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. There's the preachers. And who walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. There's the churches. He's walking. He's walking up and down. He's, he's watching you and me, looking at me. He goes on to say in verse 2, I know thy works. Uh-oh. I know thy works and thy labor, thy patience. And, and they, they, this was a good thing because he said, And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they're apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Oh, they were, they, were, they were watching people. They didn't take everybody at face value. They, they kind of checked them out. Now, I've done that a time or two. I got in trouble. You know, you be careful about it. Yeah, you, sometimes people look good, man. They just look good. They just come on the scene and they're bouncy and bubbly and all that stuff. And uh, find out later, and they, 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 didn't, they didn't last long, you know. And they gone. You say, where are they at? They don't come anymore. What happened to them? You know? Yeah, buddy. Oh, we see Christ in the midst of the church, in the midst of his people, searching the hearts. Man looks on the outward appearance, doesn't the Bible say? Yep. God looks on the heart. Heart's deceitful and above all things desperately, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9 said, yeah. Oh, God can know it. I don't know it. I don't know your heart, but God knows it. He knows those people that are genuine. He knows those that are playing church. Just play. He knows our works. I know that works, he said. He knows those areas we need to change. Need to move up a little closer. He said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. That's a pretty good deal, I think. Boy, I've been trying to draw nigh to him because I sure want him to draw nigh to me. He knows your prayer life. He knows how much you study the Bible. He knows how much you witness. He knows if you tithe. Ooh, look out there. All the things you do and don't do, he knows all that. And it's coming today. The Bible says God's going to judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Found in Romans chapter 2, verse 16. Let me read it to you. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Amen. And he is. I mean the secret. He knows every secret thing that you might not want anybody else to know, but he knows them all. He knows them all. Number six. God is the holy example. First uh, John 2 and verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also, so to walk. There's that word. We keep running to that word every time. <laughs> Even as he walked. We're to walk like Jesus walked. Now, I know you're not perfect and I'm not perfect, but we, we could move up and do a whole lot better than we did. He talked his talk and then he walked his walk. I mean, he walked perfectly. He even thought perfectly. Never had a bad thought. Can you imagine? He practiced what he preached, didn't he? The gospel. Well, you and I ought to do it. We kind of poor, miserable examples of it. I know that. I understand that. Best we can do. But Christ is a perfect example. He says in Hebrews 7, 26, For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Woo! Higher than the heavens. That's pretty high. Oh, my. Let me give you one more. Number seven. He's the supreme. God is the supreme exceller. He says in Psalm 104, verse 3, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Hmm. 
who maketh the clouds his chariot. You better not try that. You might fall through the cloud. I think you would. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Wow. Woo. Walks on the wind. I can't hardly walk down here on the ground. God is the great, the supreme exceller. He excels in everything. I love the name uh, El Shaddai. It's one of my favorite names of God. It means almighty God. Not just mighty God. Almighty God. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You can't even dream as big as God can do. Man, why do we try to, to we, we, we make him too small a lot of times. A lot of times our God's too small. He said to the disciples one time, oh, ye faithless and perverse generation, how long am I going to be with you? <laughs> he got kind of tired of it. Bring him to me. But he brought that little old boy to him and he cast the demons out of him. Woo. His disciples couldn't do it, but he did it. Oh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse uh, 20 to 25. Listen, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations, they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Hey, a little stick of wood. No, I've seen gods made out of different things. They call them gods, little g. They can't save. They got eyes that can't see, the Bible says. The ears that can't hear, hands that can't work, and legs that can't walk, and all that. Man. No, no. Goes on to say in verse 21, Isaiah 45, 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Talking about people with little G gods. And there's a lot of people like that. They may not have an actual one. Some of them do have an actual one. Who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from uh, that time? Have not I the Lord? And there's no God else beside thee, a just God and a Savior. There's none beside him. There's none beside him. Why would we let them in America? They're doing it. I've been in store after store and seen them selling Buddhas and selling this God and that God. They're all over the place. Yeah. I could have bought one a while back for $195. I about run into it. I about walked into that thing. Right in the middle of the road. Right. The aisle. They wanted you to see it. I mean, it was in the middle of the path where you're supposed to go down the store. I said, man, I could have my own God for $195. <laughs> then I got to thinking, but he can't see. <laughs> he can't hear. He can't do nothing. <laughs> He's a God that can't help you. I don't want a God that can't help me. I want a God that can help me. I want Almighty God. He can help me. Goes on to say in verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, there's none else. There's no other God. There's no other Savior. Goes on to say in verse 23, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Boy, he said all that. He said, uh, for I'm God, there's none else. Uh, verse before that, there's no God else beside thee, just God, and there's none else beside. He said it three times right there in those verses. Three times. I, don't, I believe he meant it. There's no other God beside me. He looked around and wasn't no God beside him. Whoa. And you and I better know. And you that are watching better know that there's no God but one. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, John 14, verse 6. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse uh, 5 says that uh, there's only one God and one mediator. Uh, one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Only one. Over and over the Bible says it was one. Only one. And you better, you and I better know that. And if you don't know that one God, oh my. Psalm 48 verse 1, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. Hallelujah. And the rest of the next verse says, beautiful for situation, the God of the whole, whole earth. There's Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the, the great king. Hallelujah. I, I like to sing it. When I get to that verse, when I'm reading through the Bible and I get to that, I sing it. We have a song, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Anybody know it? In the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation. The next verse says, the joy of the whole earth 
His Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. I love it. Man, I love it. Oh, my friend, I'm telling you. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What a question. He already answered it back up in verse 17. No. He said, there's nothing too hard for me. God said it. God said, there's nothing too hard for me. And my question this morning is this. Do you know him? Do you know him? Nothing else will matter if you, in that day that Jesus comes and it's too late and you're left behind or uh, that hand of death comes and takes you and and it, it'll be instant. It will not, you, may not have, you may not have a doctor say you got six months, you know. It may be suddenly that you leave here. If you don't know him, you need to know him today. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Uh, John 1, 12. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, praise God. If you don't know him, whether you're here or, on, or watching my, uh, the screen, you can be saved today if you'll simply just bow and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Tim, if you've got a song here, you might play a couple verses up, and we're just going to give it we need to have invitations back at the churches. You know, kind of like COVID direct things. We need to quit that. We need to have church like we had church. How about it? Anybody want to come and get an altar? You might have somebody else you're praying for. You come and pray. You might want to pray and come and pray for America. Or you might want to come and get saved yourself. Whatever it is. You buy. Watch this. Bible. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.